Good afternoon. My name is Lee Saraville. I'm the Executive Director of the University at Albany Alumni Association. I hope that everyone's enjoyed their meal, which was inspired by Sweet Greens, a farm-to-table uh, restaurant chain. Our featured speaker today, Rob, is uh, on the board of Sweet Greens. Uh, he also was in integral in the creation of the popular Sweet Life Festival. Now, I guess the closest Sweet Greens is in New York City. Uh, but maybe with Rob's influence, we can get one in, uh, in Albany fairly soon. That would be great. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for being here for the ninth annual Reaching Higher, Achieving More Luncheon. The pro program showcases the remarkable career paths of the University at Albany graduates. You'll see posters and kiosks throughout our campus that tout the achievements of our featured alumni. We've proudly showcased a range of, a range of exciting and influential careers, ranging from entrepreneurs, uh, doctors, social workers, authors, policymakers, and more. And their accomplishments certainly serve as an inspiration to our students and really a source of pride for the entire university community. This year, we're thrilled to welcome our featured alumnus, Rob Stone from the class of 1990. Rob's an entre entrepreneur whose business ventures are at the forefront of, as we can tell, music and marketing. And here to tell us a little bit more about Rob is Maria Randazzo from the class of 2016, a criminal justice major. Maria. Good afternoon. I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to give Rob a tour around campus this morning showing him everything that's changed in the past 25 years. 25 years may seem like a long time, but when you look at all that Rob has managed to accomplish in those years since leaving UAlbany, it seems like an impossible feat. A, nat a native of Long Island, Rob graduated from the University at Albany in 1990 with a bachelor's degree in business. Upon graduation, he made a name for himself in the hip hop industry, working in promotions at various record companies. Four years later, Rob joined Arista Records, where he helped launch the careers of some of hip hop's biggest artists. In 1996, despite an intense bidding war among top record labels, Rob made the bold decision to strike out on his own by founding Cornerstone Agency, a Manhattan-based creative lifestyle marketing firm. Cornerstone was built on the belief that to reach consumers, you must inspire. Cornerstone has become an international agency with offices in New York, Los Angeles, London, and Sao Paulo. Rob has charted a new direction for the industry by integrating music into corporate branding campaigns, working with companies like Converse, Pepsi, Mountain Dew, and Nike. For example, in 2007, Nike commissioned Cornerstone to build a campaign celebrating the 25th anniversary of Air Force One shoes. Rob worked with none other than famed producer Rick Rubin to create the song Better Than I've Ever Been, which was featured during today's launch. The tribute to the classic Air Force One, featuring Rakim, KRS-One, Nas, and Kanye West was the first branded song to ever be nominated for a Grammy. Rob has always had his finger on the pulse of popular culture, so when he founded The Fader magazine in 1999, it stood out as a leader in emerging music, style, and culture. Rob has graciously provided everyone here today with an issue of The Fader, which the New York Times dubbed as the New Music and Fashion Bible. Rob is well known for giving exposure to some of today's top artists before they receive mainstream recognition. The Fader was the first magazine to put many of today's most influential artists on the cover. Clearly, Rob is a man with incredible foresight and vision, and I am personally inspired by the courage he shows by always following his intuition. To give us a better understanding of Rob's career path, he's put together a special video for today's event. Please enjoy. <laughs> Rob, if you could talk to yourself in 1990, would you still buy those jeans? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, please give a warm welcome to Mr. Rob Stone. Maria, you'll probably be up here someday, and there'll be a picture of you on that that we'll make fun of. <laughs> um, 
God, this is a little overwhelming, but it, I'll, I'll get through it. I believe that. So um, thank you for having me here today. Uh, I'm elated and truly excited to be here. I couldn't think of a better place to be for all these homecoming. I'd like to thank Mary Johnson uh, for her enthusiasm and spirit in every conversation with her. She bubbles with pride for this place. Um, I'd like to thank President Jones and Vice President Fardeen Sanai, who I spent some time with earlier. The school has changed so much since I've been here, and it's, it's a tribute to everyone's hard work here, so that's incredible. <sighs> Sorry. All right, so when Mary asked me earlier this year to come speak with you today, I was a little hesitant. As I mentioned in the video, I prefer to be behind the camera or the mic than in front of it. Um, but she was very convincing, and she said, oh, come on, the students will love you. So I'm not sure if you're going to love me, but maybe I could share some things with you from my career that will help you get through what's ahead of you. So <clears throat> in order to look forward, I believe you sometimes need to look back. So when I think about who I am and why I am who I am, it comes down to three factors. The first were my parents. They were so important to me. I was truly blessed to have the lessons and teaching they gave me. My mother is a beautiful woman with such a kind soul who taught me to pursue my passion and my creative ambition. It's what has fueled me. My father was a, was a hard driving determined and taught me integrity rises above all. Do the right thing and everything else will follow. He also taught me as his father passed away when he was three and he wasn't blessed with the best stepfather that you can overcome and achieve anything. It might be a little rockier of a road, but anything is possible. Um, number two, my passions, music and sports. My entire life I love competing in sports. The thrill of winning and the bitterness of defeat has always had such a profound impact on me. The excitement always came from achieving and pushing myself to the next level, grinding it out and testing my limits. With music, I realized at an early age that a song could penetrate my soul, a melody could uplift my spirit, and that lyrics could blow my mind. You can only imagine how blessed I felt years later um, to be in a position to work with such amazing artists, including the notorious B.I.G. It was all a dream. <laughs> he says it much better than I do. So. Um, the third factor is cancer. They say that one out of three people will get cancer. This will be a little tough, but... Um, but you, just, you never expect it to be yourself. So I was a sophomore here at Albany. Somebody make me laugh, please. <laughs> Thank you, my man. Um, so yeah, I was a sophomore here at Albany. And uh, there used to be a thing that will never happen again called Fountain Day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so don't even, I talked to, to Professor Jones, it's not happening. But when everyone was getting ready to go to Fountain Day, I was packing to go home to get cancer treatment. At first, I didn't believe, that, I didn't believe the doctors. I was very vocal about it. Um, but all the tests proved that I, I was wrong. So every summer, every, every morning that summer, I was at the hospital at 6 a.m. getting my treatment. Well, they told me that the radiation treatment saved my life, and it very well may have, but it was music that gave me hope. Hip-hop did that for me when I was most vulnerable. It gave me an inner strength and belief to hit this thing head on. Cancer was not going to beat me, just like Joe Simmons and Daryl McDaniels of Run DMC would profess. I'm the king of rock, there is none higher. Sucker MCs can call me sire. To burn my kingdom, you must use fire. I won't stop rocking until I retire. And I didn't and I won't. So music is what I woke up to every day and it got me out of bed. Um, I made it through that radiation experience and I was declared 100% cured and, you know, five years later. Today, as bad as it was to have cancer, and believe me, it's not something you want, it very well may have been something in some twilight zone sort of way, the best thing that could have happened to a middle class suburban kid. It taught me toughness, 
It exposed me to how vulnerable we can be. It scared the hell out of me. It gave me an appreciation for what I had, what I could control, and what I couldn't. It also taught me that you need hope, you need belief, you need laughter, and sometimes you even need to cry. But paramount to it all, you need support, and you can't get it done alone. With that said, there is a big world on the other side of that door. At times, it can be incredibly gratifying and rewarding, and at other times, it can be vicious. Room's so quiet, but... <laughs> well, when, when Mary asked me to speak, I thought about what I would want to hear if I was in, in college, and it probably wouldn't be only about my cancer, but that's a big part of who I am. So I'll share with you um, a story from my past that I think it was a really special moment when it was happening, but it's even more special when you realize, and you can look back and realize how special it was. Um, it was about 2002, and I was sitting in my office, and by the way, one of my, somebody who graduated from Albany is here, who worked for me as an intern, and worked her way up, and now has her own business, but Ro Johnson is here, class of 96, so thank you for being here. I don't know if you were in the office this day, but it, it was an amazing day. And uh, Chris Atlas, who ran Urban Marketing for me, he said, there's this young producer, he wants to come in to you know, talk to you, he wants to play you some music, um, he wants to be a rap artist, an MC, but he's produced some pretty big records. So I was like, yeah, sure, I have him come up. So Chris walks into my office, and it's a young Kanye West. So, like, I, like, I'm sitting there, I'm talking to Chris and his manager, Al Branch, and this guy Kanye is kind of, you can see, like, his mind's racing, he's not really interacting with us. But he kind of just blurts out, hey, can you play my CD? So I was like, sure, I'll play your CD. So I put his CD in, and the music starts, and I thought we were going to hear his music. And it was the instrumental version. And this kid, who nobody knew as an MC, started doing his lyrics. But he wasn't doing his lyrics like we do in the car. He was doing his lyrics like it was Madison Square Garden. And it was like bright lights like this thing that's on me over here. <laughs> so he, he just took over. And we were so, we were in awe of this guy. And he started doing the song Through the Wire. And he got up on my coffee table. And I think by the end of the first verse, I mean, he was, he was like sweating at that point. Like seven people from my office, 10 people were in the, in the hallway. Were you at the office or no? You probably, you'd remember a few of that. <laughs> so, so next thing you know, the third verse, it's like 40 of us are in my office watching this guy go for broke. And he went for broke, and it, it's, such a, it's such a great analogy for life because he wouldn't have gotten the cover. He would not have been on the cover of The Fader. We would have missed the opportunity if I would have told Chris, nah, I don't, I don't have time to meet some young producer. So you never know where it's going to come from, but he made it happen, and I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of artists out there that say, God, the fader never gave me a cover, I can't get the cover. This guy went and got it. He went for it. And for whatever you think about Kanye, like, he has a passion for what he does, and I think that's the underlying thing is follow your passion. So in wrapping this up, I just want to thank, you know, the faculty again and you guys for having me and, and listening to my story and watching the video. And, um, just know, smile, things are not always going to go your way. Work hard, build a peer group of friends that can help you keep your family close and have a great time, follow your passion. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of people in presentations like this always talk about passion, but with you I think we feel it. So thank you so much for giving of your time and, and, and coming back here. And um, small token of our appreciation, but for everything you've done, your creativity, your passion, you really help make you all any stronger. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. He goes, I'm done now, right? I'm done? Yeah, you're done, Rob.
Thank you, everyone, for, for coming. Feel free to, to sit around and enjoy dessert and coffee. We hope we'll see you tonight for the welcome wine tasting at the museum. We've got a, a sold out group there. The place is going to be packed. It's going to be a great night. Tomorrow morning in this room, we'll be with President Jones for his president's breakfast. A lot of other activities going on throughout the weekend. Don't forget the Great Dane game day. We're going to get after me and the Black Bears tomorrow going down. So enjoy your weekend. Have a great time. We'll see you all this weekend. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>